Well, hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle, and today I want to talk about a book that I just read, and I literally cannot find a flaw with it. I think it's so amazing. I want to talk about why I like it so much and why it hit home so much, and, you know, maybe you'll, you'll find a reason to pick it up yourself. I would definitely love to talk about it. There are themes for days in this book, but without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about sharp objects. A little bit of backstory on why I even picked up this book in the first place. Well, I've been feeling a little burnt out on the whole fantasy thing. My home has always been mystery. Mystery, this is why I like dystopian and sci-fi a lot, because there's often some sort of like cop element. My favorite trope is like a cop trying to solve a mystery. And in this book, it is a journalist who is trying to figure out a murder. I have actually watched the HBO adaptation a few years ago. I actually thought it was Gone Girl for a minute, which I had never actually seen, but I'd heard a lot of things about. But it's actually just the same author as Gone Girl. And having just started Gone Girl this morning, I can tell you they are very different stories. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna be focused. I'm gonna focus. I know how to do that. Stop it, I do know how to focus. Let's kind of like break this down into sections so we can talk about what's really, really good about the story, which is pretty much everything, but we're gonna break it down and talk about why. Before we get talking about this subject, I do want to put a couple of trigger warnings out there because this book does cover a couple of heavy topics, which if you are sensitive to, you definitely should stay away from. That is the concept of self-harm, suicidal ideation, and alcoholism, as well as abuse within the family. If those are topics you are sensitive to, I would definitely say hold off reading this book because it does delve pretty deeply into those. It's not like the main topic of the story, but it, it's definitely up there. The main character is, uh, what is her name? Starts with a C. Camille. Sharp Objects is a story about a woman named Camille who is a writer for a small newspaper company, a newspaper company that's trying to, trying to grow and uh, they need a break. They really need a break or their newspaper is just headed for mediocrity, headed for the, the great unknown, headed for just sucking. Their, their newspaper pretty much sucks. And up until this point, she's normally been given like little fluff pieces, but she's gotten a few crime pieces here and there. Um, but her, her, boss, the boss, the editor of the newspaper, he decides that they need their next big break. And he saw another newspaper send one of their writers back to their hometown for some kind of story and came back one of the greatest newspapers. And he thought, hey, there's some children being abducted and killed down in your hometown. Why don't you go write about that? But he thinks, all right, let's send this woman back to her hometown of Wingat, Missouri and tell her to write a story about children being killed. Great. Great job, editor-in-chief. Why'd you make this decision? I still don't understand it. But anyway, she goes down to Wind Gap and she investigates, and that's the plot of the story. The whole story takes place in Wind Gap as she is trying to investigate what's going on. What happened to these two little girls? And the whole story is provocative. It is so eerie. Oh my god, can we first talk about the atmosphere of sharp objects? So it takes place in May in southern Missouri, and something you guys might want to know about southern Missouri, especially near the river, is it is incredibly hot and humid. And not only hot and humid, but it's the kind of humid that you walk out and it feels like you're in a swimming pool because the water and the humidity is that thick in the southern of Missouri. And so you get this really hot, like overbaked, like you just feel oppressed by this place the second you walk in. Like it's hot, it's sticky, it's got her family history, it's a small town. And every person she interacts with has this weird, eerie feeling like something's off with them, something's really wrong. And now this could be perpetuated by, you know, the, the author's voice in the first place. The story is first person told from Camille's point of view. Now Camille left her small town because she felt oppressed by it. So it's no surprise that as we're reading through her point of view, view, it feels oppressive to be in this place. 
And as the story progresses, we get to get a better sense of who Camille is and how she is related to this area. And we come to find that she's not terribly likable. She's not a very likable character at all. She's dealing with alcoholism. She's not nice. Um, she does feel guilt for some of the things that she does, but she's also willing to do and go pretty far to get her story told, to get to the root of what's happening with these two little girls. Is it a serial killer? Who done it? They have to find out. And um, we get to uncover things about Camille as the story progresses. We get to uncover that uh, she was not the greatest person in high school. She was pretty. She was from one of the richest families. And yeah, that definitely affected her popularity and the kinds of things she was willing to do with her friends. And we get to see that reflected in her younger half-sister, Emma. Emma is 13. She is one of the prettiest girls in school from the richest family in the whole town of like 2,000 people. And she definitely is the ruler of the roost, so to speak. She can definitely sway the other girls of the town with her opinion because she's just a hot 13-year-old with real boobs who can just smile and get people to do what she wants, pretty much. Because they all want her attention, same as when Camille was a teenager. They all wanted her attention as well. And we actually find very quickly that Camille and her mother they have a stressed relationship to say the best. Okay, so if you guys are into MBTI, the mom is like that classic ESFJ Southern lady, you know, the one who's very like, she's so nice, but her comments are also like snide. And any and she's also a narcissist. This has nothing to do with ESFJ, but the character's mom herself is a narcissist. And the way that she'll talk to people as if you are the reason I'm feeling a certain way and you should feel bad about that. Um, You are making other people feel bad. You should feel bad about that. Like she's so mad that her daughter is here to investigate the murder of two children. She thinks it's distasteful. She thinks it's terrible. She thinks it's awful. She thinks like the whole town is going to hate her. It's so insensitive to their feelings. And she she lets her opinion be known about that. And every time Camille tries to talk about the story, her mom says, just be vague. Tell me you're going to town. Tell me you have to run an errand. Don't tell me you're going to investigate or whatever. So this really stressed and strained relationship is the backbone of the entire story. The story always comes back to Camille and her mom and this really stressed relationship they have, but also how similar they are at the same time. There's like a whole lot of parallels between Camille and the other characters. Now, Camille has this really interesting quirk. So we, I already gave you guys the disclaimer, but something about Camille is that she is known for self-harming. She struggles with thoughts to want to harm herself. And she actually had to go into a hospital to deal with this because it got so bad. She carved up her entire body from neck down to her ankles, to her wrists. So her feet, her fingers. No, actually, I think she did her feet. So I think the only thing that was free is her hands and her face, and a small place on her back that she could never reach. And not only has she hurt herself, she's carved words into her body. I don't remember this from the show. I don't remember there being words, but it's very likely there were, and that's just a detail I forgot. But the book does not let you forget that there are words all over her body, because as she feels emotions, as certain events happen, different words across her body in different locations will light up or buzz or tickle or itch. And she'll feel these words somewhere, like there's a vanish across her collarbone or chest or something. Uh, There is pain or disgust or those kinds of words all over her body. So she wears a lot of oversized clothes and it's hot and humid and she's an alcoholic. So all these things just make it so 
it must be really tough for her to be there. And you just feel so much sympathy for her, even though she's not a great person. Like the more you read it, the more you realize she's not a very good person, but you feel more and more sympathy for her as it goes along. And even as these things come out about her that make her, you know, one more realistic, but also two a worse person, you want to forgive her. You want to like, hug her and console her and tell her everything's gonna be okay. Her story arc in Sharp Objects is just chef's kiss. Another really great reason to read this book is the prose. The prose just smacks you in the face. She uses incredibly fantastic ways of saying things that feel like it's coming from the character, but it's also written in a really artistic, wonderful way. Um, and I've noticed, now that I've started Gone Girl, that she likes writing about writers. Maybe that makes it easier for her to have them have good prose. But the prose is one of the best I've read in this entire year. And I have read 22 books this year. Um, so the prose is up there. The only other book that I think compares is Fight Club. Fight Club has phenomenal prose as well. Something about it just like tickles me the right way. This book tickled me in the right way in every single way. <laughs> the themes of this book could be a conversation in and of itself, but some of the greatest themes are dealing with trauma, 100% dealing with trauma, um, dealing with familial problems, uh, dealing with the feeling of being stuck or being oppressed. Um, there's also the whole concept of her parents having this pig farm. Um, Camille refuses to eat pig meat because she sees, and we actually see as the reader, how pigs are treated in the pig factory in the slaughterhouse. You can't really say anything specifically about all factory farmers, but you can see some, some generalizations about how the people who own it can kind of overlook the um, the wrongness with what's happening at their farm because <laughs> there's even a comment at one point where the mom will not do hormones that make the pigs grow overnight. Like this chicken farmer who gave them so many hormones, they doubled in size instantly. She does it in a more natural way of giving them hormones to make them grow to way larger than they would naturally. Um, and it's just like little stuff like that just makes you think about how agriculture, how factory farms are treated in general and whether or not it's okay, which is a topic I've been thinking about a lot, especially with my friend Luke, who is a vegan, and he's been talking a lot about statistical figures of how many there are, you know, how they're treated, how much of an impact this has on the globe. And this book touches upon it and makes you kind of see the darker side of it um, through the eyes of somebody who doesn't like it. Now, she's not a vegan. She hasn't like sworn off all meats, but she has... 100% sworn off pork for this reason, because she's seen it. And we get multiple instances of her bringing up this pig farm. Is there some kind of correlation to the pig farm and the little girls? I think there possibly is. There's a lot of thematic work going on in here. And again, it could be a million hour conversation. So if you guys want to have that conversation, hit me up. I would love to talk about this book. I devoured this book, you guys. I read it as quickly as I could. It was an audiobook. It took me three days to read it. I started it on the 12th of May. I finished it on the 15th of May and I binged it. I read a third of the book one morning because I was just so invested in the story. The book, phenomenal. Definitely recommend you check it out if only for the reasons said above. So the atmosphere, the character, and every single side character feels real. They have their own backstory. They have a unique voice. They all fit certain tropes of small town Southern living, except eerie. It's like if you took Ozarks, took out the whole mafia stuff. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's like Ozarks minus mafia stuff. And that is this story. It's very creepy. It's an odd vibe and every character is so uniquely done. Like I, I can't even express 
how well done and how fleshed out these characters are. Even side characters, even characters like Jackie, who used to be the best friend of her mom, of Camille's mom. She's got her own backstory and these events that happened to her and how she is. And, you know, all of these things have been so well thought out and it's so seamless. You feel like this small town is real. You feel like these relationships are real. I'm trying to think of a negative and I literally can't. It's... I don't even know how to say how amazing it is without just telling you to read the gosh darn book. This book, Sharp Objects, is one of the best books I have read this year and last year combined. I gave it a perfect five out of five and I use like a scoring guide. I give each like element a score of one to 10 and then average it out to get like my, my score for the book. And I gave everything 10 across the board. I was just like perfect in every way. Can't think of a single way to make it better. Even if I tried to make it a sci-fi, I couldn't make it any better. Um, and I have an element for world building, which is kind of like setting building. The way that this setting is built, it feels real. And I don't think it's real. I don't think anything that happened in this setting is real, but it feels real. You can imagine the town, you can imagine the people, you can imagine the lifestyle they have. It's all so real. Anyway, again, the only, okay, so I guess I figured out what the, the only negative would be. If you are sensitive to topics about depression, self-harm, alcoholism, maybe this isn't the book for you. But if you like a creepy, ominous mystery story that keeps you on the edge of your seat, this book is for you. I haven't read a book that felt more catered to me as a reader in a long time. The only thing that would have made it better is a little science thrown in there, a little sci-fi. Like maybe there's like, maybe, maybe someone's got like, like, no, 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 no. I can't think of technology that would make this book better. I can't think of anything that would make this book better, to be honest. Sharp Objects is a solid five stars for me. 10 out of 10 would recommend, and I'm not even exaggerating in any way. This book hit me exactly where I needed to be hit in the feels. Um, and again, it's a mystery, so it makes you think. You have to put together the pieces. You have to figure out what's going on through the perspective of an alcoholic who's not the best journalist <laughs> and dealing with her trauma in her hometown while also trying to solve the murder. Um, so you get a very interesting story. It's never dull. It's never boring, even though the setting seems like it should be boring and dull. So I freaking love this book. I am probably going to recommend this book to a lot of people. I'm probably going to talk about it a lot. So prepare yourselves for that because I freaking love Sharp Objects. I'm reading Gone Girl now. And this author may be one of my up and coming new favorite authors. We'll see how much I like Gone Girl. I've heard really good things about it. I'm only a few chapters in, so we shall see. But with all that, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment your thoughts down below. And I hope you have a beautiful, amazing, fantastic day. Bye.